Welcome to TradeStation, everyone. My name is Michael Burke. I have client training here at TradeStation, and I want to welcome you to another edition of our Art of TradeStation events. Uh, this series showcases some of the powerful features and customization that the TradeStation platform has to offer. And today, um, we'll be looking at market breadth and how we can use the concept of market breadth to help gauge the overall strength and health, health of the current trend and the current market. And TradeStation has a number of tools um, that, that will help us do this. So just a reminder, we are recording this event as we do all events, and you'll be able to view, oh, and you'll be able to view uh, this event again in a few days, along with all of the other previous sessions of this series on our TradeStation YouTube channel. So there's an Art of TradeStation playlist there. Uh, during the presentation, I probably won't be taking a lot of questions, but uh, I'll, I'll field some questions at the end. Uh, but don't worry, if I don't get to your question or your question is um, off topic uh, on something else, um, we'll try to answer that question in the chat. But you'll also have my email at the end of this presentation, so you feel free to send any questions to me at, at the end of the, of the session. So this session comes with some handouts. There are three pre-built workspaces uh, that work in TradeStation 10. Uh, they use all of the built-in tools around market breadth within TradeStation. So there's no custom tools or custom easy language associated with this presentation, but the workspaces that I'm giving you showcase all of the cool indexes and other tools that are built into TradeStation around market breadth. And we'll be sharing those in a zip file um, in the chat. Um, I can send it to you in an email. It'll also be with the archive of this event. So let's get started. The following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols and trading ideas discussed are for demonstration purposes and are not recommendations. Active trading is not suitable for everyone. Options and futures trading carry a high degree of risk. You can find additional disclosure information on the TradeStation website. If you're looking to get up to speed on the TradeStation platform, uh, TradeStation Securities is hosting a daily training channel, Getting Started with TradeStation, on YouCanTrade.com. Uh, every day there is something new to learn, lots of videos, you can ask questions. Uh, check out the link, it's free to join. And if you've been with TradeStation for a little while and you're looking to take TradeStation to that next level, um, you can try a 14-day free trial of our new online masterclass. Um, here you can get all the same great advanced training that we offer in our in-person masterclass, but from the comfort of your home or office. And you get access to all the same resources and special events uh, that made our masterclass so special. So check it out for 14 days. It's then $59 a month after that, and there's just a, a wealth of, of great deep dive content there for you to take TradeStation to that next level. So let's get started. Our agenda today is to talk a little bit about what is market breadth and how market breadth can help us uh, gauge the trend or the strength of the market uh, before we make any, uh, make any other trading decisions. Use that as a, as a baseline or a foundation or a confirmation. A couple of the, the tools we'll discuss uh, revolve around uh, advancing issues and declining issues. So this is a very common way of looking at market breadth. We look at all the, the stocks that are advancing today, and we subtract all the, the uh, stocks that are declining today, and we create what's called an advanced decline line. And we'll talk about how we can build that in a trade station chart. But what this course is really about, what this session is really about, is the trade station calculated indexes. Trade station calculates hundreds of very unique uh, exclusive to TradeStation indexes that you can apply to a chart. Things like how many stocks are hitting new 52-week highs or low in the NASDAQ 100 or the Russell 2000 or all stocks in the U.S. And you can build really incredible market breadth analysis using these calculated indexes. And I'll show you some samples of those and I'll give you a PDF with a list of all of the calculated indexes that are available on TradeStation. So as I've 
I've, allude, I've kind of alluded at here, um, market breadth tries to assess the overall strength of the stock market trend by looking at how all stocks are performing together. There are multiple market breadth concepts out in the world of technical analysis based on things like the number of advancing and declining stock prices, advancing and declining volume, uh, the number of stocks above or below a certain moving average. Those kinds of things can be used to measure the overall health or strength of the market. And if we look at these tools, market breadth can sometimes signal and help us determine when a market reversal is about to occur. And you'll see that as we build some charts. So the first concept here is advancing issues versus declining issues, the advanced decline line. There is a, a very, um, a very well-known market breadth indicator called the arms index or TRIN. And what that does is it uses the advancing issues and declining issues and a ratio of advancing volume and declining volume. And it's a, it's a tool that I don't use and I'm not uh, going to explain it here today. Uh, I will show you that indicator in a chart, and if you want to explore more about the ARMS index or trend, you can, you can Google that when this is over, but you'll also have it pre-built for you in the workspaces I'm going to give you. What, what, I, what, I, um, what I find challenging about the ARMS index is that because it's a ratio using volume, there can be anomalies in volume that skew that ARMS index in the opposite direction that you would think the market is actually, or the mode that it's actually in. And so in order to know whether or not the, in order to know whether or not the, the arms index is skewed because of volume, you have to look at the volume and you have to look at advance and decline line um, and actually see what's happening to get you to the arms index. Well, I don't want to do that much work. If I need to actually look at the advanced decline line or I have to look at the advanced decline line of volume, I'll just look at those two. Why put them together in an indicator that may give me skewed results from time to time? So I don't use the arms index. Um, but I do use advancing issues versus declining issues. And the way this works is that it compares the total number of advancing issues to the total number of declining issues and then accumulates it in the chart. So that accumulation means that the actual value of the indicator doesn't mean anything. It could be a big positive number. It could be a big negative number. That does, none of that matters. What matters is what is the slope of that indicator? Is the trend up? Is the trend down? Is it reversing? That's what we look at here. We don't care about that cumulative number at the end of the chart. And, and like all of these tools, it can be used to gauge the overall market sentiment or market breadth and it attempts to measure that overall relationship between supply and demand. That's the whole point here, is that are there more buyers, are there more sellers, are there most, more traders wanting to, to get long, or are there more traders trying to get short? That's, that's the goal here. Generally, the advanced decline line and the arms index was based on all the stocks in the New York Stock Exchange. So those are very common symbols that you can find on any platform. What makes TradeStation so unique is that we give you that same data, but we give it to you in a lot of different ways. You can look at it for all stocks in the U.S. You can look at it for just the stocks on NASDAQ. Um, we even give you that information on unique indexes. So I can look at that advanced decline line on the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100 or the Russell 2000 or the Dow 30. If I just want to look at the Dow 30, I can build an advanced decline line on those indexes with those symbols already built in. So it, it's really, TradeStation offers this analysis, but really takes it to that next level. So what we're looking for here is generally what is the trend of the market and how strong is that trend? And, um, and a lot of these indicators require multi-data charting. So multi-data charting is where you add more than one symbol to a TradeStation chart. TradeStation can actually hold up to 50 different symbols uh, at, at different intervals even. So you can mix and match symbols and intervals to create very complex multi-data charts. But for market breadth, we usually just need to add to the chart the advancing issues or the declining issues or those unique indexes that we want to measure in the chart. In fact, what's interesting about multi-data analysis is that uh, it can work on any time-based interval. 
So it can be one minute, five minute, daily, weekly, monthly. You just can't use multi-data charts on, on things like um, point and figure or range bars or Kagi charts. It doesn't work in, in that environment. Uh, tick charts or volume charts, it doesn't work there. It has to be a time-based interval. And in May, I will be doing an Art of Trade Station just on multi-data analysis, talking about all the, the different things that you can do all the different analysis that you can do with multiple symbols in your chart and, and that event will be in May and you'll get notification of, of that event and you can register and attend that event uh, sometime next month. In fact, Nico may have the, the registration for that event that he can, he can send you. Okay, so this is still PowerPoint. Um, very often I forget that it's PowerPoint and I try to move the chart, so I'm just reminding myself that this is PowerPoint. This is a 60-minute chart of SPY. I have SPY in the chart because I just I want to know what the underlying market is doing historically as I'm looking at my market breadth indicators. And here we're building the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange. So this is the, the typical market breadth indicator that everyone looks at. And in the center of this chart is the customized symbol dialog that shows you that I've inserted three symbols into this chart. I've inserted the SPY ETF, the advancing issues, which is dollar sign ADV, and I've inserted dollar sign DECL. So I have I have the underlying index that I want to check against, and I have my advancing and declining symbols in there, which gives me that data throughout the day. So this this data is available intraday on minute charts, daily, weekly, or monthly. So we're looking at a 60-minute chart here. And so you can see the three subgraphs with the data, the SPY, the advancing, the declining. You can see the arrows over there on the left. And then at the bottom is our advanced decline line. And it's taking the difference between the advancing issues and the declining issues. And it's summing that up and accumulating that over time. And so that's what the orange line is at the bottom. It's that cumulative difference between those two symbols. The data two symbol, which is advancing issues, and the data three symbols symbol, which is declining issues. And you can see here, this I, I built this chart last night, so it doesn't include today. But you can see we've been in a pretty good uptrend. You can see um, all of the, the different, different kinds of um, uh, gyrations that the indicator goes through based on subtracting one from the other. So like I said, the number on the right-hand side doesn't matter. What matters is what is the slope of that indicator. And what's great about this is we're looking at the slope of that in indicator intraday. So we can see during the day, are there more advancing issues and declining issues, and what is the magnitude of that move throughout the day? Does the trend continue throughout the day? And uh, that's the concept behind advancing and declining issues, and I'll show you this in TradeStation here in a moment when we, when we uh, look at some actual charts. So the next thing I, I want to share with you is this incredible array of calculated indexes that TradeStation provides on our data network. So our, our data network obviously provides real-time data, but also during the day we have an engine that allows us to look at all the symbols uh, either for the whole market or break it into indexes and calculate unique indexes for whatever set of symbols that that we want to, to generate this unique indicator or index. And so we look at the, the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, the American Stock Exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, all stocks together, and then all the major indexes, S&P 500, Russell 2000, NASDAQ 100, and Dow 30. So all of the calculated indexes that I'm going to share with you can be parsed into any of those symbol lists and, and just depends on how you need it for your trading. So some of, the, some of the indexes that we provide are these advanced seen and declining issues and volumes that, like I just showed you. So the, the ones I showed you were for the New York Stock Exchange, but we have those for all of those other symbol groups. Uh, we also have the number of stocks hitting new 52-week highs and lows. So that's an interesting thing to think about. All the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange today, how many of them are hitting new 52-week highs or how many of them are hitting new 52-week lows? And to track that number over time with an advanced decline line, again, gives you a, a unique perspective on market breadth. Uh, we also calculate the number of stocks that are above or below their 10, 20, 50, or 200-day moving average. 
So think about that for a second. You've got all the stocks on NASDAQ. How many of them are above their 20-day moving average? How many of them are above their 50-day moving average? So that can be a, a really interesting number to track over time. And if you're looking for, you know, like a unique take on that, we also calculate the number of stocks that are crossing above their 10-day or 20-day or 50 or 200-day. So that only happens very occasionally, right? Uh, a stock can be above its 200-day moving average for a long time, but there's only really one or two bars where it crosses above or below that 200-day moving average. So looking for those unique events across a large number of symbols is an interesting way of looking at market breadth as well. Okay, so this is a 60-minute chart, and here we're looking at new 52-week highs and 52-week lows for just the S&P 500. And the advanced decline line at the bottom there is, again, subtracting the number of new 52-week highs versus the number of new 52-week lows, and we're doing that intraday. You can see that on an intraday chart. We can see that advanced decline line has kind of been going in an upslope since the 6th, where we've had this really nice run in the market. And, uh, and I, again, this is PowerPoint, so I can't go back and show you where that inflection was, but we'll look at this in, in TradeStation as well. Uh, but I wanted to, I, want, I always want to have these charts in my PowerPoint because I'm, I'm also going to provide you with my PowerPoint as a PDF and then it, these are notated really nicely and then you can look at the TradeStation workspaces, compare it with the, the PowerPoint and get that notation. So that's why we're kind of doing it both ways here. Notice the yellow arrows on the left-hand side. Again, uh, this is a 60-minute chart. I'm using Spider at the top just to see how my market breadth indicator is reacting to the actual market. And then we have data two and data three, which is the, the number of new 52-week highs and lows. And then finally, by the way, the advanced decline line that you have here in the bottom of the chart, that's just a standard indicator that comes with TradeStation. And I'll show you how that indicator is set up when we get into TradeStation. But notice here in the bottom left-hand corner of the chart where the advanced decline line status line is. Notice it says close of data two and close of data three. So this is telling us that the advanced decline line is looking at data two, which is the new 52-week highs, and it's looking at data three, which is the, the uh, new 52-week lows. So that's how we specified the indicator, what data sets to look at, it subtracts one from the other and accumulates that in the chart for us. So this is a, a daily chart. So this is a little bit longer chart. I wanted to kind of show you what that advanced decline line looks at looks like over a long look back time period. So this is all stocks in the NASDAQ, not just the NASDAQ 100. That's a different index that we offer. This is all NASDAQ stocks. And here you can see the number of new 52-week highs. Uh, over time, this is going back to November of last year. Uh, you can see the number of new 52-week lows. You can see those spikes uh, occurring there as, uh, as the coronavirus, uh, you know, that down market kicked in. We start to see the new 52-week lows kind of collapse here. And, or, and the, I'm sorry, the new 52-week highs collapse here and the new 52-week lows kind of accelerate here. But you can definitely see that in the advanced decline line at the bottom as that ratio between the two very quickly drops off. And even though we've had a nice run here, you can see that we have not really picked up here because stocks are, even though stocks have done well, they're really not hitting new 52-week highs again, right? So that's kind of our, our indication that we're still kind of, even though we've had a nice run here, stocks have not recovered and are not hitting new 52-week 52 52 week highs yet. So that's a, a good thing to know here. And it's kind of interesting to look at that here. Even though we've had a nice run in the market, we can see that that advanced decline line in 52-week highs and lows is just not recovering. It's just not recovering yet. Starting to hint at it over here. If you look over here at the very bottom right, it's trying to go up, but it just hasn't, hasn't made it yet. All right, so this is a very unique uh, chart because here I'm looking at, uh, this is a daily chart, and here I'm looking at the number of stocks that are crossing above, those are stocks crossing above their 200-day moving averages, 
and the middle graph are stocks crossing above their 50-day moving averages. So we're not looking at stocks crossing below. We're only looking at stocks crossing above. And, and you'll notice here that historically, there's always some number of, of stocks every day that are crossing above their 200-day moving average. And there's stocks crossing below their 200-day moving average. But notice how we get some unique magnitudes in, in this indicator as the market becomes more volatile. So here, just before we had a, a collapse of the market, we had a number of days where there were more stocks crossing their 50-day moving average than normal and crossing their 200-day moving average more than normal. You can see those kind of jumps there. And then as the market starts to decline, we see those numbers falling off. Uh, not as many stocks are crossing above their 200, not as many stocks are crossing above their 50-day moving average. And so the market retraces a little bit here, and then notice this very unusual event where suddenly there are a lot of stocks crossing above their 200-day moving average in the middle of a downturn. And so basically what we see here is this unique pullback action where the market has become oversold and stocks are below their 200-day moving average. They cross below them, but that is such a strong support level that there's a rubber band effect and a lot of stocks crossed and jumped back over their 200-day moving average in the middle of this downturn. And that's very unique. And of course, the market continued down, that those values collapsed again. And now we're starting to see here some stocks crossing above their 50-day moving average. And we're starting to see, in fact, yesterday, we had a really big move in both stocks crossing above their 50-day moving average and stocks crossing above their 200-day moving average. And you can see that here on the last bar. And I don't have today's data. Um, the unemployment numbers are probably going to, and, and of course the market was down today, so we're probably going to see a, not this kind of action here, but we're going to, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow and next week and see if we can continue to see these higher numbers of stocks crossing above their 50-day moving average and stocks crossing above their 200-day moving average. This is a daily chart, so we had a longer-term perspective. Okay, but so now we're going to get to um, the, the last concept here, which is the one that I, I like the most, and that is uh, stocks that are above their 50-day moving average or stocks that are above their 200-day moving average. This is a 60-minute chart now, so we're, we're able to see this data intraday, which is incredibly cool. And so data two which is the middle graph is stocks above their 50-day moving average, and the bottom graph is stocks above their 200-day moving average. And so we can see on an intraday basis, if you're a swing trader or you're an intraday trader, this is kind of interesting information to see whether or not the number of stocks above their 50-day moving average is getting bigger each day or going down each day. Right? So if the market is strong and healthy and going up, we should see more stocks above their 50-day moving average and above their 200-day moving average as the market tends to tre trend up. And we can see that as we've had this last four or five days, we've had this really nice uptrend, and we can see that same correlation in the number of stocks that are above that 50-day moving average or above that 200-day moving average. And the, the strength uh, of that momentum intraday of the stocks that are above or below is, is an interesting thing to track. And, uh, and so I thought uh, this is the one I, this is what I look at the most, is the, those number of stocks above or below uh, their moving average. And we'll look at TradeStation. I'll show you some, some permutations of these charts and how, how that works. And I gave you a lot of examples of these charts in the workspaces. So you can kind of zoom in on those things that you think are compelling for your trading. Um, I, this is the way I look at it but you may have a completely different way of trading, a different time horizon, and you're gonna to wanna to look at, at these indexes in different ways. And so there's, the great thing about this is that there's almost an unlimited number of, of permutations that, that you can use to, to help you gauge that market breadth that we're, we're looking at. So I have one other thing to show you here before we go to TradeStation. So this is the, the PDF that's in the, in the download file. Um, these are all of the uh, indexes that TradeStation provides. I've kind of given you an outline of what the, they all are. But if you kind of just look at, let me stop on a page here. Um, 
let's go down a little bit here. There's, as you can see, there's a, a million of them. So here, where do I want to stop? Here, here's a good example. So here, these are um, S&P stocks above their 10-day moving average, above their 20-day moving average, above their 50-day moving average. And that's the stock, uh, that's the, the, the symbol that you would put into TradeStation to view that data. And then there's a description here. Um, and so you can kind of get a little more detail here. But you can see that it's, it's the S&P 500, it's the Russell, um, you know, it's, it's the New York Stock Exchange, it's all symbols, Amex. So there's about 300 or so or more different indexes and this PDF will be there and you can experiment and take a look at all of those indexes. Okay. We'll come back to that slide in just a moment. Okay, so uh, if you look at the bottom of the, the trade station here, there are three workspaces. Uh, this is the uh, advanced decline line workspace. Uh, there's a workspace for 52 week highs and low examples. And then there's a workspace here for those stocks that are above or below a, a moving average. So let's take a look at the, the market breadth workspace first. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close these two graphs at the bottom. But what those two graphs are, are the ARMS index. Remember I told you at the beginning I was gonna provide um, a graphs of the ARMS index. So these are the ARMS index at the bottom. If you can Google that and, and, and see if it's something that is compelling to you, uh, this is how you build it in TradeStation. So those, those charts are here. I'm, I'm just not going to use them for this presentation. Like I said, I, I do not follow the ARMS index. As I, and again, just, just to kind of review for those of you who may not have been here at the very beginning, the reason I do that is the ARMS index is made up of a number of different components, and you really have to look at those components to see whether or not the ARMS index is telling you what you think it, it, it's telling you. So if I have to look at all the components, then I don't need the ARMS index, I just look at the components. And that's what these two charts are here. These are the advanced decline lines. I'm just gonna make these a little bit bigger. So the one on the right is a daily chart, and the one on the left is a 60 minute chart. And then you can see that advanced decline line here. Uh, and it, it's very interesting, you'll notice that uh, the, the advancing issues ver versus declining issues, you know, it tracks the market very well. Um, what this is telling us is that um, simply the, the strength of that move. Um, if, if we were seeing a decline in prices, uh, and again, this is, these are very dramatic times in price movement, but in normal times, if you, if you saw a divergence there between the two, you might think that you're just looking at a pullback. You're not looking at a change in direction. Obviously here, we were looking at a change of direction in, in late February through March. And then on the right-hand side is intraday. So if you're an intraday trader or a swing trader, it's nice to look at that advanced decline line and see what the, what the, tr what the strength of the market breadth is over the last three or four days. You know, is the market pulling back? Is that gonna be a, is that a pullback or is, or is, or is that the change of the, of the trend in the market? So here you can see that advanced decline line changed direction quite severely today. The market was down, uh, you know, um, point and a half or so. And so we're seeing that advanced decline line change there. So is that a pullback or is that a change in direction? We're gonna need more than one day to, to determine that. So how do we build a multi-data chart? So here in any chart, you can go to the data menu here at the top and select add symbol. And here you would type in a new symbol and it would add it to the chart. Now, if you go to data in this graph and look at edit symbol, you can see the multi-data elements that I've applied to the chart. Data one is the SPY, data two is the advancing issues, and data three is the declining issues. And each of those can be set to whatever date range historically or interval that you want to look at. Right now, it's daily looking at three years back, but it could be whatever you wanted it to be. It could be weekly, it could be 60 minutes like we have on the right, it could be 15 minutes, and you could drill down and see how the market breadth is performing you know, on, on shorter time frames. It's, it's something you can experiment with. Here, you then, once you've got your data in the chart, then you can insert your advanced decline line. And so here, the advanced decline line, we access that by going to studies and add study. Here 
There we go. And the advanced decline line, there's a couple of them. There's just this one, which is a cumulative, and this is a ratio. So if you want the cumulative ratio, you can do that. They're, they're, they, they're going to look the same for the most part, um, but I just use the, the cumulative advanced decline line. So I insert that into the chart, and it asks you to specify where the advancing issues are and where the declining issues are, and those are the data, that, the data points that we added to the chart. So we would just say close of data 2 and close of data 3, where the, that's the close of the advancing issues, and that's the close of the declining issues, so data 2 and data 3. And remember that data 2 and data 3 is specified when you insert them into the chart, and you can see them here in the customized symbol dialog. So in the, in the, the next workspace is the 52-week highs and lows. And I just have a, you know, a number of, of samples here. So here I'm going to just show you. So on the right is the NASDAQ composite. So these are all the stocks in the NASDAQ stock exchange on a 60-minute chart and on a daily chart. So let me expand this daily chart. And again, here we can see now better historically where um, stocks that are hitting new 52-week highs versus stocks that are hitting new 52-week lows, how that, you know, when the market's in an uptrend, that's very vibrant. There's lots of new 52-week highs when the market is trending up. And, and as, as that number starts declining, fewer stocks are hitting their 52-week high, the market's getting, you know, overbought, we can start seeing those numbers decline, and, and that can tell us that we're in the, you know, we're starting to enter an area of consolidation, or even in this case, it was signaling the fact that, you know, we're, we may be looking at, at a change of direction. I don't think anyone was expecting that change of direction, but it starts, it starts to hint at you that the market's overbought, and I need to start thinking about that and, and keeping an eye on that. And then, of course, as the market declined, we started hitting 52-week lows. And, and again, you can see that it reached a peak of new 52-week lows very close to that bottom, and then it kind of dropped off as, as the market moved off of those lows. The market was oversold at that point. Buyers came back in. There were fewer 52-week lows, and so we see the market take off. So I think this is really incredible, compelling you know, data that we can add to our analysis. So that's all of NASDAQ. Over here on the right, um, I have the S&P 500. This is uh, 50, new 52-week highs and 52-week lows of the S&P 500. So the daily looks about the same. Let me show you the, the intraday. This is the 60-minute over the last few days. And you can see um, in that bottom graph, not the very bottom graph, which is the advanced decline line, but in that third graph, there are, there, there are almost no 52-week lows being hit. Once in a while, a, one stock in all of the S&P 500 over the last few days uh, was hitting a new 52-week low. So this, you can see there's just not a lot of 52-week lows happening here. But when the market's declining, um, especially when it's declining significantly over some period of time, we start seeing more stocks hitting new 52-week lows. By the way, keep in mind the, the numbers over here on the right. So here, this is the S&P 500. So what this is telling us, let's say on, on this day, on the 28th, that 12 stocks out of all the stocks in the, in the, in the S&P 500, only 12 stocks were making new 52-week lows. So, I mean, that's, that's not a huge sampling of those stocks. It's, it's, it certainly is positive for the market, but it's only 12 out of 500. So those are things to look at. Keep in mind how many... Always keep in mind how many issues or the total number of issues that these indexes are looking at. So it's kind of easy to know for the S&P 500 or the Russell 2000. NASDAQ has about 3,500 symbols. Um, New York Stock Exchange has, has a, a, around the same. And Amex is less. How many stocks are in the total universe of stocks are, is somewhere around 8,000, 8,200. So keep those numbers in mind. They're not exact and they change all the time. But those are ballpark numbers of, of, of how many symbols are on each exchange. And, uh, and finally here, I, I want to show you the, what I look at primarily, and, and that is the number of, of stocks that are above or below uh, a certain moving average. And this is one of my favorite charts right here. 
This is um, uh, the QQQ here. I'm looking at just the uh, NASDAQ 100. And so I have a horizontal line on each of these data points at 50. So 50, if you think about it, is that inflection point, right? Over, if, when it's above 50, over half of the stocks are above their moving average. When it's less than that, then they're below that moving average, right? So this is a short, this is a daily chart, but I'm looking at short-term moving averages. I think the market is so crazy right now that, that even though I, I, I believe that 50 and 200 day moving averages are good support levels, right now to kind of gauge what's happening to the market on a day, day, day by day basis, I like looking at the 20 day moving average and the 50 day moving average. So this middle graph is how many stocks are above their 20 day moving average and the stock below is how many, and the, and the, and the symbol below is how many stocks are above their 50 day moving average. So clearly you see this lags a little bit here and, um, and you can definitely see we, we dipped below that in, in, in uh, late February uh, during that, that turn. So that was, a, that was that first inclination, it dropped below. Here it dropped below 50, you know, about the same time the market was really collapsing at that point. And then we started seeing some, some positive numbers, more stocks above their 20 day moving average more stocks above their 50-day moving average somewhere you know, earlier this month in April. And they've stayed pretty much above there. And notice that um, right now we're looking at almost all of the stocks for the last couple of weeks, all 100 stocks in the NASDAQ 100 have been above their 20-day moving average. And uh, a couple of days ago, um, almost all of them were above their 50-day moving average. So that's kind of an over, you know, if you think about it, that's kind of an overbought signal, right? How, how long is that sustainable where all the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 are going to be above their 20-day moving average or above their 50-day moving average? And we've seen it kind of come off of that number. And today, it's still high. Today, 86 stocks out of 100 are above their 20-day moving average, and 88 stocks um, are above their 50-day moving average. So you can see that those numbers um, are are still pretty good even though we had a down day today. And let's look at, um, so the other one I have here is, it's kind of an interesting one. I, I kind of, sh I showed you this in the, in the PowerPoint, so I'll show it to you again here, uh, but on a 60 minute chart, these are so this is the spider, and these are how many stocks have crossed above their 50-day moving average and above their 200-day moving average. So you can see we've been making really good you know, progress here. More stocks are crossing above their 50-day moving average. More stocks are crossing above their 200-day moving average. And today, today that those numbers fell off. This was a down day, and, and that's typically what happens on a down day. But what's interesting about this is that we can see that progression throughout the day, intraday. This is a 60 minute chart. So if we get a change in direction or there's a news event, we can often see it here where the number of stocks crossing above a 50 day moving average or a 200 day moving average may be trending up for part of the day, the market changes direction and, and then we see that number fall off. So that is the concept of the TradeStation calculated indexes to, to help us with, with market breadth. And as I said, there are uh, just a, an incredible number of permutations of different indexes and different symbol groups and intervals that you can use to, to build really interesting um, foundational market breadth indicators to give you an, an idea of what the strength of the current trend is, and that's, or, or if the trend is, is looking to reverse. And so it's very, very compelling data and, uh, and something that's unique to TradeStation. One of the benefits of, of being at TradeStation is to, is to get these kinds of things that you can't get anywhere else, and these calculated indexes are certainly in that, uh, in that group. So I, I wanna thank everybody for, uh, for joining me. And uh, we will be doing this again in May. I'll be doing a multi-data analysis art of TradeStation. 
my colleague Dave Russell, David Russell will be doing something very interesting around scanning for 52-week high and low opportunities. That'll be in the early part of the month. So the TradeStation newsletter will be out in a couple of weeks, so keep an eye on that and register for those events as, uh, uh, as soon as you can, if you can make it. So thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, I hope you have a great afternoon and good luck in your trading. We'll see you at another upcoming TradeStation event. Thanks everybody.